welcome back to the Lumios Post, where we talk about all things Pokemon, and that right there, all things Pokemon, that unfortunately means we have to talk about the bad with the good, right? And that's unfortunately exactly what we're doing today. This is going to be a pretty raw video, like I'm not really going to edit much of this, this is just going to kind of be, um, you know, some music over the background or whatever, but uh, I, I wanted this to just be honest, you know, I just wanted to kind of just vent uh, without anything scripted or pre-planned. And, you know, really just have a conversation with you guys. I already talked about this briefly on my Twitter, uh, but I want to go more in depth with it with YouTube because obviously there's character limits on Twitter and there isn't on YouTube. So, uh, what happened? Well, Pokemon Home, uh, we've been waiting for it for a really long time and we finally got the announcement last Thursday, Pokemon Home will be dropping May 24th. That is... Uh, at the time this video is coming up and at the time of recording, that is this coming Wednesday. That's pretty freaking sweet. And then the very next day, we had a tweet saying that they had put the carts before the Mudsdale. That's an actual quote there. Um, and that it was a mistake. This is not really the release date for home, but we promise it's coming very soon. So, I just wanted to talk about, you know, what happened here, what this shows, you know, my thoughts on it, uh, and I'd love to get your thoughts on it as well, you know, in the comments, you know, let me know how you're feeling about this, let me know what you're thinking, let me know what you think of my thoughts that I'm going to share as we talk about this. So, first off, I'd just like to say that, you know, there there was a, uh, there's a Pokemon leaker uh, that does, you know, exactly that, they leak Pokemon stuff, they've been leaking for a really long time now, but kind of grew in popularity, uh, in the pre Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and Legends Arceus days, and they knew this release date and they had teased this release date. Well, then, uh, flash forward to, uh, or fast forward rather, to uh, this week, they, you know, said when it was announced the release date, they were like, yeah, you know, here's how I knew it was the release date. And then the next day, it was revealed, hey, this was a mistake, this isn't the release date. So, the fact that this leaker knew about the release date beforehand tells me, personally, that this was not a mistake, this was a change. At some point, the Pokemon Home update was planned for May 24th, but something happened to push this back. So, that makes sense, you know, they, they could have encountered a bug that maybe, like, when you connect, you know, Pokemon, let's go Pikachu and Eevee to it now. For some reason, it deletes your save file. And so, yeah, that's a huge bug. We need to push that uh, release date back. We need to figure out how to fix this bug. And then we will drop the update, right? You know, if they see a bug that's that bad and they drop the update, that's pretty irresponsible of them, right? So, I imagine that that's what happened. There was a bug and that's why they pushed it back. But that's the thing. That means that they would have pushed it back. It wasn't a mistake, it was a delay. And that's fine. That happens all the time. Like, it, Tears of the Kingdom, you know, huge game that people are really loving right now. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, that game got delayed. It actually was supposed to come out earlier than it did, but they had announced last year, hey, we're actually going to be taking a little bit longer on this. And people love it. People And people were happy then. You know, there were a lot of people that were going, ah, oh, man, you know, that's super upsetting that uh, Legend of Zelda is going to be pushed back a little bit. But, you know, I know they're going to make a great game. So it, people are fine with delays. They might be a little upset, but they're not going to be angry with the company with a delay, you know? So I'm saying all this to say that the Pokemon company should have said, you know, yeah, this was the initial plan date, but, uh, we actually have to delay this update due to some performance issues or due to some bug fixes, and everybody would have been fine. But instead, they chose to say, this was a mistake. Like, as if, yeah, we typed, it comes out May 24th, and we clicked enter. That just wasn't true. Our bad. And that just, that makes them look stupid, you know? And that's the thing, is they need to be transparent with their fans. And there's a lot of companies that benefit from being transparent with their fans. Again, Legend of Zelda kills it because they are transparent with their fans. They also kill it because they make amazing games. But it, that is a big part of it. You know, even though it took six years for a new uh, Legend of Zelda mainline game to come out, so not including, like, any uh, ports or or uh, like the remaster of Link's Awakening. It took six years between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. 
but throughout all that time the legend of zelda uh creators the developers are interacting with their fans they are making it clear they're saying hey yeah we're working on a breath of the wild 2 hey yeah sorry breath of the wild 2 uh we're gonna have to push it a little bit you know we're we want to make sure this is the best game possible so we need to push it a little bit it, that transparency really pays off it makes the uh, fans feel connected to the company, which is really good because that creates brand loyalty. It makes the fans feel connected to the product, which again is very good because brand loyalty. And uh, most importantly, it's just a good way to not get bad press. You know, it's a good way for people to not go on Twitter and post the Pokemon company's lazy, the Pokemon company screwed up yet again. You know, it, it's a good way to stop that from happening because they won't think that. They'll think, hey, there was a bug and they're going to fix it because bugs people understand for the most part there's always going to be that one idiot but for the most part people understand that bugs happen and you know that's that's just something that we've got to deal with but yeah i i think that they should have been more transparent and said this was the release date but we pushed it back or just explain what happened if it was a mistake if they actually did say may 24th when that was simply not true explain how the heck that mistake happened like don't just be like oh we put the cart before the mudsdale whoopsies are bad say you know we had previously thought it would be this time because of xxx but you know it, it is delayed but it's coming very soon it, again transparency is just so so important now we have to get a little bit uglier so let's talk about pokemon home pokemon home uh you know it connects to a bunch of the pokemon mainline games in fact all the mainline games uh you know from let's go pikachu and eevee onward and so it would be easy for one to assume that this is a software made by game freak it is not it is not a software made by game freak it is a uh, software made by ilka who were also the creators of uh, pokemon brilliant diamond and shining pearl now personally i think that game freak shouldn't work with ilka anymore and i'm, I'm gonna cite why i I'm a, I'm a three strikes you're out kind of guy you know I, I like to be a forgiving person and i like to give people second chances but there comes a point where i do think you should always forgive because i think that's good for your heart uh, and it's, you know, it, it's also good for other people, but it really is good for you. You just don't want to carry that weight with you. And also, this is a company, so for forgiveness, the, come on now. I, I mean that as in people, you know, if you can't forgive a company, you've got serious issues that you need to see a counselor about. But anyways, um, <laughs> uh, I believe, forgive, but there's a point where, hmm, I don't want to do that anymore. You know, like, uh, for example, if I were to have someone borrow money from me, and uh, they said it was like to help their family but they ended up spending it all on drugs well then you know i'd forgive them i'm not going to loan them money again and i feel like that's the place that game freak should be at with ilka right now because we had brewing down and shining pearl uh that game released and it, it was a buggy game and again bugs happen right that's okay but it was more than that this game was super buggy like beyond uh normal like i would argue that it was actually more buggy than scarlet and violet i'll leave you all to debate that in the comments but that isn't even my big issue with burning diamond shining pearl my big issue with burning diamond shining pearl was that a lot of the features of the game didn't work when the game was released there was a whole global trading station um and that didn't work until uh later on the union room did not work properly until later on wonder trades did not work properly until later on these were all things that about i, I want to say it was four months after brand diamond china pearls release but don't hold me to that i know it was after legends arceus had come out they finally fixed these things and brand diamond china pearl made these things available a new game had already come out and you're adding features to a pre-existing game you know what i mean that's super sloppy so that's strike one uh, strike two would be the home uh, uh home gate 2022 <laughs> as i'll call it which is where home took a long time to come out for brilliant diamond shining pearl and legends arceus and the reason why this is is because ilka developed brilliant diamond shining pearl on unity which was not compatible with the uh software that ba or bank home is created on now that is the super loose condensed version of of the whole story but that basically is the gist of it ilka made a game that wasn't even compatible with a software that it needed to be that they developed so if anybody should be 
you know, making games that are compatible with Pokemon Home, it should be Ilka. But they didn't. They dropped the ball. And then now there's Home taking so long this time around and this embarrassing hiccup of, you know, hey, uh, our mistake, it's coming out later than we thought. It, it really is. It's... Ilka is a problem company, and I, I really do think that. If you look, the the story of Pokemon and cloud storage systems has just gotten worse as time's gone on. And I'll illustrate that. Sword and Shield, or no, let's go back even further than Sword and Shield. X and Y uh, had Pokemon Bank released on side, alongside them. That was also how you would get your Pokemon from DS games to the 3DS games, Pokemon XY, later, you know, Aura, Sun and Moon, all those games. This software, this Pokemon uh, Bank, came out three months after so or X and Y's release. X and Y came out in October. Uh, Bank came out in January, and it actually was supposed to come out sooner. But this was Pokemon's like kind of you know first time making Bank, and so it uh, it had a lot of server issues and I think some bugs, so it got pushed a little bit further. But that's three months. That's not a bad way. That really isn't a bad way. Uh, Sun and Moon, it was about two months, maybe three months. I think it was two months, though. So, again, not a bad wait for Sun and Moon to be connected to Bank. Then we have um, X and Y, or not X and Y, Sword and Shield. I keep wanting to mix those two up. Sword and Shield. With Sword and Shield, we're now on the Switch, so it's Pokemon Home. Sword and Shield took three months to connect to Pokemon Home. Fantastic. That is a great way. I am happy to wait that long. Then we have Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra. Both DLCs, it was day one for those DLCs that they were able to connect to Pokemon Home. Well, then we have Brilliant Diamond, Shiny Pearl, and Legends Arceus. They received the update for Pokemon Bank at the same time. This was six months for Brilliant Diamond, Shiny Pearl, and four months for Legends Arceus. So now the longest wait we've had to do. And the really embarrassing thing about this, too, is that, again, if you look at X and Y, you look at Sword and Shield, this was adding almost 100 new Pokemon or models or forms, all these different things, into the game. So I can kind of be a little sympathetic at taking longer because they're having to add these assets into Pokemon Bank or Pokemon Home, right? Well, now you have Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl didn't have any new forms or new Pokemon in it. So to be honest, day one should have been possible. A day one home compatibility should have been possible. But then you have Legends Arceus. It did have some new forms, some new Pokemon. It wasn't that many. Four months is kind of bad. It really is. Now today we have a Scarlet and Violet and it has taken six months and still counting and uh, at least as the time this video is dropping, it's still counting. We don't know when. It might be seven months for these games to release. Also, there's some other hiccups with Home, like the uh, West reported that Pokemon Home will be coming early 2023. Now, it should be noted that only the West reported this, and Japan did not report it, which is obviously where Pokemon is headquartered. So they're kind of the final say. You know, they're the ones you should always trust over anyone else. But uh, the Japanese Pokemon company did not say that it would be early 2023. They kept saying spring 2023. But uh, the West did say early 2023. And honestly, that's kind of a, a big hiccup too. Because it, it's May now. It's May uh, 22nd, in fact, at the time of recording this and at the time of upload. So that means it has been... Um, it has been over one third of the year. Well, I'd say then we're past early 2023. So again, big mess up on them. Now, let's talk about us. Let's talk about us, the fans of Pokemon. There's been a lot of talk about what's been going on with Pokemon Home, and I did just kind of want to address this itself, uh, like our reactions to it. So for one, I've seen a lot of people uh, say that we shouldn't be commenting things under the Pokemon's official tweets. And they are only half right. We should not be commenting death threats under Pokemon's official tweets. That's stupid. That's, I mean, at the end of the day, I am a huge Pokemon fan. If Pokemon did not exist, I know this is going to hurt everyone's feelings, but we would all still be alive. It would be okay. We, it would suck. 
but it would be okay. It is not life-threatening. For that reason, you should not be threatening someone's life over a game. That, it sucks that this is a conversation we have to have, right? Uh, but yeah. But, I will say to those people saying we shouldn't comment things on the Pokemon Company's official Twitter, I do think you are partly wrong because I do think we should comment things on there. The, we have a right as a consumer to let the, you know, people who are selling us a product know how we feel about that product and know what we want different about that product. This is no different. I want Pokemon Home to be releasing early. I think this wait is inexcusable. So, it is okay for me to comment that on Twitter as long as I am respectful, nice, and I am not threatening to kill anybody because, again, that is just childish. But yeah, I feel like there's two camps of Pokemon fans at um, this point. There are the fans who, you know, are still mad about uh, Dexit and they're, you know, they hate everything Pokemon and, you know, are just looking to be mad at the franchise. Like, they're just mad for the sake of being mad. Uh, and when I say two camps, I don't mean literally everyone falls onto these camps, but I do think they are a loud, uh, they're either a loud minority or they are a majority that Pokemon fans fall into one of these two camps. But then the other side of the camp is just as bad as the side that's bitter about Nat Dex. Because what they do is they are like overcompensating for all the Dexiters, all the people upset about National Dex and, you know, bitter about the franchise and complaining about the franchise. And so what they do is they act like anytime someone has a criticism, that that criticism is invalid and they just hate the franchise and they're just bitter about national decks and it's like that's not true some people have valid complaints i've seen several times scarlet and violet has obviously been a i wouldn't even say a controversial game but it, it had a lot of room for improvement right everybody agrees on that and i've seen a lot of the times people will voice their opinions on that they'll be like yeah you know scarlet and violet was really buggy and i was kind of upset to have to you know, play Gen 9 in such a buggy format. And then I'll see someone will comment under it and be like, you just hate Pokemon. And it's like, what? No. No, they don't. In fact, if anything, if you can criticize something, it's because you love it, you know, because you know how good it can be because it has been that good. So yeah, I just wanted to get that off my chest too, that, you know, to the people who are sending death threats, you know, shut up. And to the people who are saying, don't comment anything on the Pokemon's official Twitter. It won't change anything. You shut up, too. <laughs> Had to... That's that's probably the most heated I've ever gotten on my channel. But yeah, alright. <laughs> that's the most heated I've ever felt, at least. Hopefully I'm doing a good job at hiding it. This is fun. I love doing this. I should do more of these whenever there's big controversies. But yeah, I just wanted to address that aspect of the community's reaction to this. Uh, what I think we can do going forward is, yeah, voice your opinion to the Pokemon Company... Be respectful, though, because also, at the end of the day, it's just like, uh, you know, I'm by no means a large YouTuber, but um, I, I do get comments, and I'll, say, I'll have comments that are like, hey, you know, love the video, you know, one thing I'd suggest is this, and I actually kind of take that to heart, and I'm like, you know, that's a good idea, and I listen to it, but like, if I see a comment that's like, you know, oh, you know, this guy's super ugly, I hate him. He should do this, this, and this. I'm not even listening. Like, I tapped out it. This guy's super ugly. Like, you're, if you're going to be a jerk, I don't want your opinion. You know? So, be respectful uh, to both the Pokemon Company, the developers, um, even Oka. <laughs> and also, be respectful to people who, you know, uh, disagree with you. That's that's all I've got to say. And just everybody, you know, if, if you don't like something that you're seeing from someone else if you don't like someone else's opinion well that's great it doesn't have to be your opinion too but yeah there you go guys that's just my thoughts on all this big home fiasco hopefully we will be seeing home soon they said very soon and apparently the japanese uh twitter also said very soon and apparently that's like a bigger deal in japan when they say very soon i don't understand you know there's obviously some language barriers there uh but yeah i just wanted to uh, voice my thoughts on that, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. would love to get into some discussions about all this. Guys, please be respectful in the comments. It's it's a freaking game. Just let's, let's act like we're adults, right? Can we do that, please? Okay, thanks. Uh, 
Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. If you like these style of videos, I'll do more of them when we get big things uh, like this, as well as just the regular video to do theories, lore, just general looks at the franchise, you know, Easter eggs, retcons, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, you don't want to miss all that, so again, like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And until next time, I'll see all of you later.